Hello, this is the SpreadJS v14 new features webinar. My name is Kevin Ashley, and today I will be going over the great new features that we added in this release and how can they can improve your application. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in the questions pane and we will go over them at the end of the presentation. Before we get started, I wanted to give you a bit of info about myself. I'm the product manager for SpreadJS and have been working on the Grip City team for a little over five years now. I graduated from North Carolina State University with a bachelor's degree in computer science and a concentration in game design. As part of this presentation, we have two members of our Spread support team, Mackenzie and Tyler. They will help with answering any questions that you might have in the chat for this webinar, and they can help you with any spread issues you might have when you contact our support team. In this presentation, I'll be going over all the features that we added in V14, including a new designer. To start off, we will go over the brand new SpreadJS designer component, move on to enhancements we made to the worksheet functionality, calculation enhancements, and then finally chart enhancements. With SpreadJS, we've always wanted to provide a way for developers to create and edit their own templates and workbooks that could be used within SpreadJS. Over the years, customers have asked us if they could provide that same functionality to their own users. With that idea in mind, we decided to provide the SpreadJS Designer Source Code License, which allowed developers to take that code and add it to their own application. This makes the process of creating a familiar interface simple and efficient. However, customizing the source code to fit specific requirements wasn't always straightforward, and upgrading to a newer version would mean redoing those changes if any of our updates affected them. With v14, we completely redid the designer and made it componentized. This new designer provides developers with a modular component rather than application source code. The familiar modern user interface includes a ribbon, status bar, formula bar, context menus, settings, dialogues, and task panes. As an add-on component, developers can provide the designer functionality that they know to the customers with a separate add-on deployment license. To provide developers with a head start and ideas about how they could use the designer, we included the code for this component with the SpreadJS trial. All that needs to be done to include this in your application is to purchase a separate deployment license for that designer. What makes the new designer so great is the ease with which developers can customize the component to fit their requirements. The ribbon in the designer is controlled by a single configuration file, so you can add and remove buttons and tabs change the styling, change the functionality of different buttons, customize dialogues, and even add additional functionality, all with a single file, as shown in the code on the left. The next features we will go over are the enhancements we made to functionalities in our worksheets. One of the biggest performance enhancements is incremental loading. This new feature lets data and formulas load in the background as a workbook is first loaded. This focus on performance and speed means that your user's experience won't be hindered by long load times. You can see this demonstrated in the following demo. <clears throat> so right here we have uh, the incremental loading demo. So I'll first start off by showing you what it looks like when you just load some sample JSON. So you can see it takes a little bit to actually load that JSON into SpreadJS. <clears throat> All right, so now we'll try refreshing the page and use incremental loading instead to load that sample JSON. So now you'll see it loads pretty instantaneously while the rest of the data is actually loaded in the background as shown in the status bar here. So 
SpreadJS v14 is now also ADA compliant with Section 508. So it has support for screen readers like NVDA for Windows, Windows Narrator, and VoiceOver for Mac OS. We have also added a new dropdown type known as the multi column picker. You can create this dropdown by specifying a data source and column information, and then setting it as a style on the cell. This new property function can be especially useful for parsing the returned object and getting the different properties of the data, which will be described later on in this webinar. We have a demo that shows this new dropdown, which I will go over now. So as you can see here, both of these cells are actually using the multi-column picker cell type. So if I were to select this dropdown, you can see it's actually a spread JS instance essentially running within this box. So I can actually just select any of the cells and it will populate the data in there. When we added comment functionality in SpreadJS, it was always a red triangle at the top right corner of a cell. With V14, we've added the ability for you to change the color and size with simple API calls, allowing you to better match your application style and colors. Range to HTML export essentially lets you export cell ranges from SpreadJS to HTML tables. You could do something like design report tables within SpreadJS and then export them to HTML strings, which you could then add to an HTML page, making designing a report with tables really easy. With previous versions of SpreadJS, the Git range API would use row and column indices and count in order to get the specified range. With v14, we have added the more convenient parameter, the range address, as a string. Now you can simply specify a range, such as A1 to C3, and return that range of cells. So as you can see on the left, that first get range is how you would do it originally in v v13 and before. And now the later one is how you do it in v14. Now you could still do it the old way. We've just added another parameter to use to make it a little bit easier to figure out what ranges that you're trying to get in code. A user request that we received a lot of was the ability to copy images and paste them into sheets. With v14, we have added this feature and the pasted image will have the same size, border, and background as the image in Excel. Charts and shapes will also be copied as images, and multiple images will be converted to a single image when pasted into SpreadJS. It should be noted that the Allow Copy Paste Excel Style option has to be set to true in order for this feature to work, and it is enabled by default. This will work in any instance of SpreadJS v14, but I'll show it in our floating object demo as I copy an image from an Excel file to SpreadJS. So right here, this is just our floating object demo. And then I have an Excel file right here. So I could just simply select this image right here, copy it, and then paste it into SpreadJS. I could also select the chart, copy that, and it'll paste it as an image into SpreadJS. And then finally, let's say I want to have this shape or this image right here, and I wanted the spacing to be pretty much the same as it is in Excel, I could control click on both of these, copy them, and when I paste in Excel, it actually creates a single image with the right spacing and sizing. Developers can now also set a display strategy for user-defined date and number types with the Numbers Spit Mode option. The two options are Mask and Overflow. Mask is enabled by default, 
and displays pound symbols in place of text that doesn't fit, an overflow will overflow the text into adjacent cells in the sheet. So as you can see in that first GIF, that is actually using the mask overflow or the mask uh, number fit mode. So when you actually change the size of the column, it'll change that to pound symbols, uh, just the date and numbers, not, the, not any uh, strings or normal text. Um, the second one is overflow. So you can see it'll actually overflow the data into adjacent cells, depending on the actual alignment of the cell. So left aligned cells will overflow into the right, middle aligned cells will overflow into both left and right, and then right aligned cells will overflow to the left. Nice. Auto merge was originally designed with the intention that users could select and edit individual cells in a range of cells that were automatically merged. With V14, we updated this so that those merged cells can be selected as if they were actually span cells, as shown in the GIF here. This can be switched on and off with a simple API call to change the selection mode to source or merged. I will now show you how the different selection modes work with auto merge in our demo. So as you can see right now, the selection mode is on merged. So this is the new V14 feature, so I can actually select the cell as if I merged or spanned it manually. But if I were to change the auto merge selection mode to source, now I can select the individual cells that actually made up that merge cell before it was auto merged by spread.js. And you see if I actually go in, you can see the data is still visible there. And if I were to change that, it would actually unmer auto unmerge those cells. In V13, we added functionality to tables to automatically expand rows as data was added in the table. So for example, you would add some data and then you'd press enter to go to a new line. Spread.js would automatically add a new row to accompany that. Per user request with this release, we actually added some simple API to just enable or disable that feature because some customers actually didn't want that feature in their application. Spreadsheet scrolling could sometimes be annoying with large rows or columns, and because scrolling was done row by row or column by column, large data would be scrolled over in a single tick of the scroll bar. Pixel scrolling was another feature we added in a previous release, and it allows users to scroll by a specific amount of pixels instead of the default row by row scrolling. This feature has now been enhanced to work with scroll bars and not just using the scroll wheel on your mouse. And I will now show that in our demo. So right now, pixel scrolling is enabled. So you can see I'm actually scrolling and it only scrolls through part of the row at a time, each time I scroll. And then if I turn pixel scrolling off, I actually scroll one or more rows at a time. And the enhancement we made to this is that not only will this work with your scroll wheel, but it'll actually work with the scroll bar here on the side. Fill effects and patterns for cells have been a feature of Excel, but were never implemented in Spread.js until now. We have introduced these features with V14 that have included support importing and exporting files that have these fill effects and patterns in them. The range cell type was introduced in V13, and it gave users the ability to define a range of cells to use as a template within a single cell. This means that complex layouts could be easily designed and incorporated with one another without worrying about trying to align columns and row sizes. With this release, we have added an object function, which allows you to define an object from a set of property names and expressions within Spread.js. This object can be used for data binding to other cells or 
to a cell a range cell type. You could also use it for the range block spark length function, which we will go over on the next slide. The property function was added to parse an object by its property. This can be especially useful for the multi-column pickers as you can get the different properties of an object represented by a single line in the dropdown, as shown in the screenshot. You simply need to specify the cell reference and the object property reference. I will now show you the multi-column dropdown demo again, but this time I'll show you how it uses the object and property functions. So right here, you see we have a multi-column picker here. And this particular cell is actually bound to select the uh, genre property of that data. So here, for example, if I select it, it actually shows the comedy uh, as the genre for that particular movie that I selected. And here you can see it in the code. Scroll all the way down here, uh, right here. So it's actually set as a style on the cell. And it's using this to get the actual data of that particular cell, which in this case, if you double click, it's just an object. And then it's saying, okay, I want the genre property of that. And that's what's displayed in the cell. The new range block function is a spark line that works with range templates, as shown in the screenshot to the left. The function can be used to select the template range of cells and data to combine together into a single template to use on a cell, which can be perfect for implementing dashboards and multi-row scenarios. Essentially, you would use this formula at runtime to apply a format string using a range block without having to create a new cell type in code, like you would have had to do before we added this functionality. Another big feature we have added is iterative calculations, which can help with finding solutions to certain calculations by running them over and over using the result of the previous calculation. With this user requested feature, you can do things like find the future value of an investment at a certain month or provide an automatic timestamp in your files. You could also perform what if analysis with the calc engine goal seek function which uses iterative calculations. Essentially, you can set a specific, specific number of circular references to go through to get to the final result that you are looking for. Some of the new Excel functions we have added to Spread.js include XMatch, XLOOKUP, and LET, which allow users to create formulas that are easy to read and calculations that are faster with larger data sets. Compared to Match and VLOOKUP, these functions use faster algorithms and more flexible options. The LET function makes it easier for users to define intermediate formulas when working with complex calculations, essentially letting you define a variable to use within your formula. This can simplify formulas and improve performance in the case of re repeated expressions within a formula. So as you can see in that last screenshot on the bottom right there, the data is actually the um, variable that we're defining using the let function. And then you're using it in different parts of, the, of that particular function. The other function we enhanced was the convert function, which we simply add a new units to. These units include weight, mass, distance, force, pressure, temperature, volume, area, and binary prefixes. As part of our calculation enhancements, we made some changes to some of our sparklines. One such change was the cascade sparkline. We have added a total column to make it more in line with how cascade charts should look. These sparklines are useful for charting income statements and things like balance sheets. The other enhancement we made was the location of formulas and sparklines. Column formulas and sparklines can now be shown within header rows, 
which lets you easily summarize data sets and keep them at the top of the sheet, no matter where the user scrolls to. Uh, so this is similar to something like frozen rows or columns. With V14, we have also made enhancements to some of our charts. The first one we will go over is a new chart type. Clone charts are best used to represent sequential data in a process to show the amount of data in each stage as a subset of the previous stage, resulting in larger data at the top and smaller at the bottom, like a funnel. You could, for example, use this kind of chart to show a flow of users through an email campaign, starting with the email sent out, how many of those were viewed, how many of those were clicked, and so on and so forth. Spreadjazz v14 can now successfully create this chart type as well as import and export files that contain it. We have also added support for axis cross points. This essentially means that you can choose where the X and Y axes cross each other, which can be set manually or with some built-in API. This can be especially useful with data where the series values might dip below or above a specific threshold and you don't want to have a lot of white space in your chart. Another feature we added was chart patterns, chart pattern fills. This Excel feature would let users add patterns to chart elements, including foreground and background elements. This was intended to work with printing charts in black and white to distinguish different colors of those charts. And we have now added this feature to Spread.js. Users also requested bar and column chart gap width and overlap capabilities, so we added them in V14. The gap width is the space between bar or column clusters and can be between 0 and 5. Overlap sets how bars and columns are positioned in regards to one another and can be between negative 1 and 1. These can help you better space out your data as well as more easily show comparisons between different data. As you can see, the first two screenshots show off different gap widths. So the first one shows off a smaller gap width, and the second one is a larger one. And the last one actually shows overlap. So you can see these bars are actually overlapped with one another, and that's because the overlap is set to 0.5. We recently added donut charts to Spread.js, and with this release, we have actually added the ability to customize the size of the hole in the chart. This means you could display wider slices to better accommodate longer data labels, or thinner slices to show more series effectively. Other than simply changing the display of the chart, a big use case for this feature is to actually set the size to zero, and then manipulate the chart's data to essentially create a gauge chart. Spread.js also supports line breaks now for the chart area. So this includes text in the axis labels and legend text, so they won't be overlapping with other chart elements. We have also enhanced our data label implementation for V14. Previous iterations only supported commas as the delimiter for data labels, but with V14, we have added support for semicolons, periods, and line breaks. And that concludes the Spread.js B14 new features webinar. If you haven't already, you can download a trial of Spread.js at www.grapecity.com slash spread.js slash download. If there are any questions, please post them in the chat now and we will go over them. Otherwise, feel free to submit feedback on this webinar using my email provided. If you have any sort of feature requests, component requests, or issues that you are running into, please submit those using our support portal. Hi, Kevin. There were a couple questions. I believe most of them have been answered already throughout the presentation. If there are any other questions, feel free to put them in the uh, chat window. One of them was uh, regarding the designer for customizing the new designer. Um, just for everybody's knowledge, the customizations are done through the config file. 
So you can add or remove items and it's all done through the config file. There's been a question about getting a recording of the presentation. Yes, this was recorded and you should receive, everybody that registered should receive the uh, recording link by the end of this week. So what we'll do, we will compile it, we'll send it up to marketing and they'll send out the link to everybody that registered. So yeah, look for that by the end of this week. Another one is about the print dialog. Um, will there be a paid setup feature similar to Excel for when we want to print or export as PDF? And we're pretty much limited, and Kevin, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we're pretty much limited to the browser's print features. We do have some print info that can be set on the spreadsheet, but the actual interactions for customizing the dialog, we are limited to the browser's print window. So yes, we are limited in that regards. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, unfortunately, that's outside of our control. A great question. Okay, yeah, I think we got most of them answered throughout the presentation. If there's any further questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait a few minutes. Uh, here's one. Are there any examples on how to set up the Spread.js design with AngularJS? I don't believe we're supporting AngularJS right now. I believe it's only Angular. Correct, yeah. We actually have some examples that uh, come with the trial, I believe. Um, just some demos that show how to use it in Angular, um, Vue, and React, I believe. Uh, another question regarding the same with Angular JS. So we will no longer be supporting it. The new designer does not support it. That's the question first. The actual product. Yeah, we support like before, but the new designer. We have not added support for Angular JS for the designer only. Okay, question, can we add an HTML image tag inside of a cell? Yeah, I believe you can embed HTML directly. Um, we can probably point you to a sample. Yeah, I can see if I can find one real quick. Yeah. And I think this is kind of going, I think uh, for that one, I think it was adding with showing the label with the image tag. I believe that's the question. So yeah, we can, you can embed direct uh, HTML. Kevin, will see if he can find you a demo right now, or if nothing else, we can follow up right after the presentation. Uh, question, what about examples in normal uh, JavaScript with script tags? I'm not, can you, can you elaborate on that one, please?
Okay, and again, we can get back to you for uh, if the question was not answered. Um, okay, another one just came in. I noticed when using larger files and workbooks with many formulas, the performance of the component diminishes. What are some limitations in terms of row size, number of formulas? Uh, we've tested with thousands and thousands of formulas. I mean, if you're hitting millions and millions and millions of rows, uh, we are limited to the browser. We have posted in Kevin, if, uh, or Tyler, or McKinsey, if you want to grab the best practices link, in the documentation, we have a best practices link. So if you're working with larger files and lots of calculations, we do offer some best practices for that one. And we will provide the link for that. But after following the best practices, if you do see any other issues, there's always ways we can help you optimize your your workbooks, even like uh, like uh, setting up functions, the best way to optimize those. But yeah, we, we can definitely help you out if after following the best practices, you're still seeing something, definitely let our support team know. Okay, were there any other questions today? Okay, thank you everyone for joining. We really appreciate your time. Uh, again, we will follow this up with the recording, the presentation, look for that at the end of the week. If nothing else, um, you can send Kevin an email directly at kevin.ashley at greatcity.com or visit us online, www.grapecity.com to download your trial. Okay, thank you, everyone. Yep, and if you uh, if some of those questions were answered, uh, just email me using that email link, and I'll get back to you. So, thank you for joining, everyone. Thank you.